Hello everyone, welcome to yet another episode of Nil Dot Talks. Uh, today I have uh, with me Sunit, and Sunit is a philosopher. So Sunit, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. So my name is Sunit, and um, yeah, as you said, philosopher. It's a very abstract term. You know, philosophers question everything. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but yeah, in terms of my academics, uh, my core subjects of interest are psychology and mm. philosophy. So. Mm. my doctorates have been in these two subjects and yeah my core interest has been human being at the center yeah. and of course philosophy because um it's very broad mm. you know mm. uh, it perhaps includes everything so yeah. so that's yeah. the reason philosophy yeah, yeah. that's very interesting yeah. so uh, sunit let me uh, get straight to the question yes. this is the theme of our uh, podcast So uh, the other day, me and Shweta, we were having a conversation, and uh, we uh, saw we stumbled across this video by Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson, and in the video he says that he has a fascinatingly disturbing thought, and the thought is that uh, if you look at the closest relative to human beings, it's the chimpanzee, and we share around ninety eight, ninety nine percent of our yeah. DNA with the chimps. Yeah. Uh, so uh, like uh, the difference between a human being and a chimpanzee, their intelligence all stems from that one percent. Uh, difference in the dna yeah. so what if uh, my question to you is what if we encounter a life form tomorrow which is 1% different to us than we are to the chimps what would that life form be like and how would that encounter go wonderful so by this question do you mean uh so we see an evolution right in different species yeah. so and we say that our brain is more evolved mm. than a chimpanzee's brain yeah, yeah? yeah. So uh, do you mean to say somebody which is more evolved yes yes which is more evolved than us more evolved than us yeah and uh, yeah so i feel already mm. within humans mm. also um perhaps there's a degree yeah of uh, difference in evolution yeah. in people yeah. some brains are slightly different the mm. uh, frontal you know neocortex is going to be perhaps different than mm. some other brains and you look at tribals also across um, millennia i believe the brain humans what we call humans also have evolved so yeah so your question is how would that human not human or life that species form, the life, life form. form yeah would would seem to be yeah yeah that's a that's a good question um yeah it's hard to answer <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. because looking at chimpanzees you i don't think it would have been uh, easy to uh, say what humans would look mm. right mm. so looking at human so um, top of the mind two mm. thoughts come mm. yeah uh, i would say that these species would yeah. have um, uh, let's call them superhumans in fact yeah. some people have called them superhumans human mm. and then there's a superhuman yeah. species or something yeah. uh, i could see two possibilities a uh, some of them could have extreme power of destruction okay okay because that's what humans if you see yeah. compared to what chimpanzees do yeah. to environment yeah. and what humans are doing yeah. to environment we have ruined a lot of things so so i see that there is a possibility because we are at a very strange humans and an evolution yeah. we are at a strange crossroad yeah. where some have become worse than animals yeah yeah you know yeah. I, I, you to see uh, take these words with with a very uh, caution. care caution because you know we're not saying that you animals are less or something but mm. in if you understand the context so i could see that yeah perhaps this species is a possibly uh, more destructive and b they could be phenomenally more creative mm. and mm. Uh, more intelligent mm. uh, perhaps uh, creating a different form of existing together okay so uh, you say that they would be uh, capable of immense destruction and uh, like you said or creation or creation or, or intelligence yeah. with, which takes us in a so called positive direction with mm. like you know phenomenally mm. um existing together um, maybe going beyond earth mm. uh, you know also coexisting with the mm. bigger uh, mm. bigger in a bigger cosmic space and universal yeah. space yeah maybe. do you do you think they would try to communicate with us because let's say uh, if the chimps are like 1% uh, less intelligent than us we go we don't go and talk to chimpanzees right we don't say hey how are you doing or if we say we don't expect a reply back from them mm -hmm. so do you think such a being would try to communicate with humans i think um, the intention could be there 
because mm. i would say i would like to con- communicate with chimps and i think mm. we do like mm. we communicate mm. with dogs mm. yeah. uh, pets cats we're yeah. doing it yeah uh, the question could be will they uh, or us mm. will be able to Mm. I think that's the question perhaps yeah, yeah. yeah. like if you've changed a lot mm. it's very hypothetical but if you've changed so much i don't know if the physical form has changed so much because mm. chimps and us is not biologically we are almost we are very similar, similar. we yeah. we have the similar instinct so if i say it is only that degree of a difference then i don't see a um, challenge mm. in uh, yeah in the um, in at least the intent to mm. communicate because i do see that we we do share a great commonality yeah with mm. chimps mm. you know with the structures you know yeah so maybe. <laughs> maybe 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 okay yeah. okay but if you i can also imagine and i feel that it's not just this is one evolutionary stream i feel there are there could be already beings at a very different in a very di- on a very different evolutionary path and um, they could be already existing yeah. at a very different but yeah. those forms could be so unfathomable to us mm. you know we know these elements i don't mm. know if there's some completely different structure mm. or different like maybe they're there and we can't see them because they don't fall into yeah. infrared and yeah. you know ultraviolet so yeah. so i don't know if it is possible for that communication if the differences become too much mm. yeah but with that degree of chimp and us mm. and us and whatever you call them mm. superhumans mm. maybe mm-hmm. yeah mm. also uh, like when we talk about human beings since you said that philosophy revolves around you know being human uh, like if uh, if there is a life form out there like we ask all these deep philosophical questions that what is the purpose of our life where do we yeah. stand in the universe yeah. and what is the meaning of our existence uh, such a species do you think they would have a purpose i think purpose is a very Uh, very abstract term term yeah purpose is like um, like humans do they know what's the purpose like if i meet lot of people <laughs> yeah. i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i don't know <laughs> so I, i'm still so figuring it out exactly so as a species if you say do humans know their purpose big question mark yeah and if they know it yeah what they're doing it mm. it's quite bizarre like mm. if that is the purpose of if we, if what we are doing mm. was a result of our purpose mm. i don't think there is so i think purpose comes with lot of consciousness like are mm. you conscious mm. i think the question is consciousness yeah the yeah. real question is consciousness so i am not sure i'm not sure in animal kingdom in human kingdom we don't get to see much consciousness mm. most mm. of us mm. live in a pretty much an automated way you know mm. we are slightly different than animals yeah so perhaps our uh, houses have changed uh, fashion senses changed but um, predominantly we haven't changed much yeah. you know we yeah. we're still run by the we are still instinctive very instinctive yeah so um it is it's yeah what would be the purpose of that hmm. uh, that species and you know it's it's i think yeah it's it's as i said which direction this evolution takes and will it always take you know is it always this graph or is it cyclical i don't know yeah. as i said the mm. possibility of this powerful next species being mm. ultra destructive mm. completely egocentric mm. and uh, so much like we are already on the verge of completely wiping ourselves out we mm. equipped right mm. Mm. right yeah. now yeah. we are equipped to, to wipe destroy yeah. uh, us completely absolutely with with no scope for uh, perhaps of you know continuing this species so that species might just be more uh, eclectic and maybe <laughs> so i don't know yeah. it could go that direction or mm-hmm. we could go in the direction of yeah. maybe this uh, if there is a purpose i think it is i think the question would be consciousness which will make them aware mm. of uh, being aware of the purpose and mm. i think that's a big question what is the purpose of existence yeah. so yeah it's not just a species specific i think mm. the question of purpose i think is very deep what mm. is the purpose of existence which includes everything what is the purpose of evolution what is the purpose of life yeah 
and then that is now trans species mm. question i think mm. but do you think if the species figures out an answer to that question what is uh, the purpose of their existence or what is the purpose uh, of, of entire, entire existence? existence do you yeah. think that it would go well if you find you know anything that you're supposed to do over here like the reason behind each and every action you figure out the answer for that do you think that would go well i think so in fact um, the entire spiritual path uh, is exactly for this hmm. to become aware of what is existence hmm. and not to be limited by your own brain and your own ego and your own past experiences and this is the purpose of many many spiritual masters speak about yeah. that you become aware of the entire uh, existence and you become aware of then your existence which is very connected very much connected with this entire we are not disconnected we are part of this entire mm. existence and in that whole process perhaps you become aware of the entire purpose of uh, existence mm. and this thought is not new mm. uh, especially in india uh, and the traditional philosophers have spoken about it mm. they have perhaps answers to this they have theories to this that what is the purpose of all this Mm. and what is the nature of all this mm. yeah so but be... but what do you think uh, these uh, 1% better species yeah. would say their purpose of existence is yeah so i think it's not that there is a purpose of their existence but i think there is a possibility to become aware of the purpose of existence and uh, purpose of existence in my view could be just existence okay that's that's interesting and in fact there is a concept for this um which is the concept of sat if if it's okay to go into some uh, uh, concepts uh, uh, philosophy philosophy uh, the concept of sat sat means existence mm. and they say there is also chit which is consciousness mm. there is an existence but perhaps we have an ability to become conscious of this existence and then there is sat there is chit and then there is this there is ananda mm. the whole purpose of everything or the nature of everything is actually celebration mm. is joy is like creation perhaps everything is uh, we putting up a nice toy together mm. we creating with all the elements and all the everything galaxies we existence or creation or creator we don't know or it's all one and everything is putting together and then destroying it and mm. the whole idea of it is just ananda it's mm. just the for the joy of it mm. Mm. for the joy it's hide and seek yeah it's hide and seek you forget then you remember so mm. it's a play maybe it's a play Mm. to me what's what's closest to understanding i think the realization when it comes what is the whole thing i think the closest uh, explanation for me for everything it's it's a play mm. and yeah. then a leela it's a leela mm. and a maya yeah. so maya and leela my favorite you know uh, if i if there were any two twins and they say sunit you choose what to name them i'll say maya, maya and leela <laughs> <laughs> these are the names so i think yeah so this species perhaps and i think it's not about now any more about that species i feel there could be in current humans there could be some people who are that at 1% oh okay yeah like brilliant brains like einstein or i I, i i wouldn't einstein and all these people perhaps we judge them by their ability of analysis and logic uh, i would use a scale of consciousness mm. so of course we can't judge it because you need to be that in mm. order to see that but perhaps these people have transcended mm. and you hear this word yeah, transcending yeah transcend have transcended um the the human misery you know mm. the misery mm. is it's a hallmark of human existence mm. you know? like buddha buddha said this mm. is the central first noble truth arya there is dukkha mm. and there are perhaps already some humans mm. who have transcended that mm. uh, fate of humans to be mm. uh, in misery mm. by realizing sat chit ananda mm. and maybe they have already evolved mm. and uh, maybe yeah so so maybe so there are higher and lower levels of consciousness yes an evolution and it involves brain and it involves um, 
yeah like it some people call it mutation of brain mm-hmm. yeah because we know that brain you know as you said dna we share huge deal and we have all the evolutionary influence yeah. on yeah. our brain and we are programmed to a great degree and unless there is an intervention unless there is something and we don't know what that is or maybe we know it's complex um then there's evolution yeah mm-hmm. and then that's evolution and that's transformation mm-hmm. and of course are, there are no scientific studies about it yet but in the whole world of um we have to call it stories or something but even in recent past or something there have been people who perhaps they have said also have transcended their physical being mm. yeah so people who have stopped eating mm. uh and i don't know the truth of it and there is no scientific evidence i think for it but just to give an idea that there some people have worked on how will the body change mm. and the, the some of the things they have come up with is that body will lose its uh, need for uh, reproduction through sex yeah. perhaps and they also said the body can completely uh, uh, become light yeah. they say so yeah. and and there are cases in south india which are known for this mm-hmm. again objectively not verified but there is lot of uh accounts for people have said there's people who attend this consciousness have also been able to transform their bodies mm. their physical where uh, they yeah could merge them said their bodies into dissolve into light directly yeah so yeah there's a mutation in yeah the going physical. back going back to your point of awareness do yes. you think that the knowledge of astronomy would bring that awareness into somebody understanding that we are just floating on this pale blue dot in this universe so this is the awareness that you know these aliens better life forms would have that would give them better consciousness through this awareness yeah i think there's something intrinsically very very powerful and beautiful with that awareness you know uh one of the biggest um, uh maybe tragedies of humans is we are so self centered mm. so bogged down by self you know me my worries my worries, i become the center of everything you know mm. all our ambition and lot of destruction personal and environmental has happened through that personal ego and greed and this awareness expansive awareness that there is a massive universe mm. and there is a massive scale of time and space and we are but a speck of a dust yeah. who doesn't maybe matter so much and that realization can be so freeing so i definitely see that you know that awareness the expansion of consciousness beyond ourselves so in my when i if i'm talking to somebody as a meditative practice the first thing i say can we look around mm. without completely being just all the time preoccupied with ourselves yes. can i just look at the tree can i just look at something and be there with it and expand that our a consciousness to also something which we can't see with eyes but we exist and just become aware of that massive existence i think yes drop the i yeah like in the process you can't drop the i because mm. anything i chooses to do yeah. see if i is dropping i then that i is also becoming strong that i drop that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so the idea is in the process i can get dropped mm. because it just becomes you know or i becomes so expansive you know mm. the whole concept of aham brahmasmi you know yeah. i am everything mm. Mm. like i am not this and i am yeah. everything yeah. yeah since you brought that up aham brahmasmi uh, yes. i have this interesting thing to share and we uh, share this thing in all our talks yeah. and it's a quote by carl sagan he says that mm-hmm. you know the iron in our blood the calcium in our bones and the phosphorus in our dna was all manufactured inside a star that exploded billions of years ago yeah. so the elements that are found inside stars are the same elements that we find on earth and yes. we are made out of those same elements so my question to you is what exactly is consciousness because consciousness emerged out of matter itself so do you think consciousness is separate from matter or like it's imbibed in matter or like you know hmm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so interesting yeah 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 so the question is um is consciousness consciousness completely separate from matter from matter yeah um i why would it be that's my natural common sensical question mm. like suddenly why would that division be division be yeah like if everything is one flow why would there be this strange division 
Yeah. Because consciousness has evolved out of matter, right? There were molecules which uh, aligned themselves in a certain way and then yeah. life emerged out of those molecules. And or the other way around, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Consciousness um, uh, solidifying itself and dividing itself mm. yeah, into matter. Yeah. yeah, And then matter again trying to uh, understand its root and origin which was pure consciousness and so, this could be a continuous cycle so correct me if i'm wrong are you trying to say that everything around us is alive that like everything has its own consciousness and then we are just uh, well, let's let's not even go there because i i personally feel personal opinions don't matter much but a, a question to ask could be is everything related mm. to each other mm. What would you say to that? Everything is related to each other. So if everything is connected, then we share something common with everything. Yeah. So you can't separate things. Mm. It's all connected. Mm. And then the, perhaps the question would be, what is connecting and what is the history mm. and where it is going? Yeah. So, so that is an interesting question. But everything is, everything is connected. Yeah. Some is directly connected with me. This galaxy is connected with some other. I can't... Find a line which says now this and this yeah. is not connected at all. We can't put it in boxes. No, even if they're connected with that line, everything is connected to that line, <laughs> yeah. right? So, so there is no, there is no division. So yeah. it's yeah. all, it's all connected, and uh, uh, yeah, the concept I find fascinating that even if we talk about when we talk about material world, we talk about atoms and molecules. The vast biggest part of that is space right like it's it's, it's empty they so yeah. so they say right yeah, yeah. like electrons protons neutrons yeah. but these are some but vast majority is it's empty yeah so and you look at the universe also you see everything but vast majority is empty, empty. now what is that emptiness dark matter right so so i i find that that you know it so the common element is much bigger and the what makes you different than me so the things that separate us are much lesser and uh, of less uh, potential and they exist to lesser degree than what is common between all of us, mm. right? Mm. And I think so, yeah, that's an interesting thing yeah. too, you know. So, and, and I feel sometimes space is the best place to see that, you know. Like, yeah, it's yeah. just 5% normal matter in the universe so, and everything else is unknown. <laughs> exactly. You know, and this is also an approximation, you know, and that 5% could be 0.5% also. I don't know. <laughs> it's an approximation. Yeah. We may yeah. stumble upon Absolutely. something which says so, but we know predominantly everything is this something mm. which we don't know. And that's fascinating. Mm. That's that's very fascinating. Yeah. That's a wonderful take on all these things, Sunil. <laughs> so we are moving towards the last part of our video, and all I right. have a small surprise for you. Okay. It's going to be a rapid fire round, and I have a few questions for you. <laughs> okay. Here with me, and uh, I'll I'll be giving you three options, and you're supposed to select one. Okay. okay? Is it is it uh, knowledge? Like, are you going to test my knowledge or my opinion? You'll see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fine. Let's see. Okay, so the first question, if you had a chance to take one of these philosophers to space, which one would you choose? A. Gautam Buddha, B. Socrates, C. Karl Marx. Uh, Socrates. Socrates, okay. Second one. Shall you? I... <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, 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 you can. Just the thought is that, you know, Karl Marx is just going to find problems everywhere. Yeah. And Buddha is already enlightened. Yeah. But Socrates I'll take because he'll question everything. Everything. So I'll, I'll have a very good chat and it's a good time with him. You know, mm. Buddha is like, okay, fine, everything is nothing. And yeah. So you love curiosity <laughs> to be there. I, I, I like the banter, you know. Yeah. So if I'm taking somebody, might as well take somebody with a very active mind who's yeah. questioning everything, you know, rather than enlightened mind or activist mind. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. It's just a joke, okay? No, but yeah, it, it, still. <laughs> I get you. Yeah. Second one. If you had a chance to meet an alien and ask one of these three questions, which one would you ask? A. What is the meaning of life? B. What happens after we die? C. Who created the universe? Yeah, I'll ask the first one. What is the meaning of life? Yeah. For him or her or it, what is yeah. the meaning of life? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Third one. If you had a chance, which one of these scientists would you like to meet? A. Aryabhatta. B. Isaac Newton. C. Marie Curie. Aryabhatta. 
Aryabhatta? Yes. Any specific reason? Yeah, um, uh, like when there were very few resources and um, uh, going back in time. Mm. Technology you know, was primitive. If, and at that time, I'm very curious how did these minds work, work. in that environment when it was not even a known thing so much. Masses mm. were at a very different level mm. and uh, we have not evolved to that degree in a country like India. How and what and what was everything? How this? How he happened? It's, yeah. it's, it's, I'll, I'll I'm very much keen. Yeah. To, Interesting. Yes. Uh, if you had a chance to travel across the solar system, which one of these planets would you go on? A. Mercury. B. Venus. C. Jupiter. So Mercury, Venus, and Jupiter. And Jupiter. Hmm. Like, uh, how should I make a choice? <laughs> <laughs> All of them are beautiful. How much heat can you yeah, take? Exactly. How much like, heat can you take? Yeah, so no, no, no. You, I'm assuming that you, yeah, <laughs> assuming that I'll be intact and, yeah, yeah, and yeah, everything, like you would, uh, everything is provided. Uh, my mind is, it just started thinking, okay, Jupiter, I think it's very big, yeah. yeah. I think I'll choose something smaller. <laughs> I'll get a little better feel of, you know, Jupiter is too vast. Yeah, I think Mercury. My instinct mm. told me Mercury. What is the third one? Uh, Jupiter, uh, Venus. Venus, yeah. I think Venus we admire from here a lot. Yeah. So I think Mercury. Okay, okay. <laughs> Interesting. If you had the chance to lead one of these organizations, which one would you lead? A, SpaceX, B, NASA, C, ISRO. I'll start my own. <laughs> start my own. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, but like if you had to choose out of oh, these three. Only the Sarati. ISRO, SpaceX, or NASA. NASA. ISRO. 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 Yes. Uh, the Indian inside you or like? I think um, uh, as you are, you know, I think the other two are more, much more. One is very commercial. Yeah. And the, uh, one, uh, the, the other NASA is very established. Yeah. I find in ISRO, you know, Indian mind and Indian yeah. institutes are still a little raw, which can be shaped. Yeah, still because growing. We, and we have emotional component to it, you know, yeah. and uh, we are a little yeah. sometimes emotional, not logical, not rational, and it, which also creates a scope for doing something mm. uh, different and extraordinary. So I'd rather lead ISRO. Yeah, and then we know that this is the most happening part of the world right now. Mm. So where the biggest potential is, you know, this is the nation where, which is the youngest nation. Mm. Um, we are the most dynamic um, culture and nation right now. Uh, and if you look at the future, so this is where the future is. So yeah, is wrong. Okay. And this is the last question, Sunit. This is not just for you, but this is for everyone. Okay. If you had a chance to meet Dr. Tyson, what would you say? A. Travel to Astronera's office to do a nil dot talk. B. Get Astronera people to come wherever you are to do a nil dot talk. And C. Do a nil dot talk with Astronera people over a video call. What would you choose? To start with B. Oh. Uh, get Astronera people to come wherever you are to do a nil dot talk. Like, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Because other things can then happen after, uh, like as a result of that talk. The online thing can be then, you know. So mm. but this is more interesting. Yeah. yeah. B. Uh, yeah, travel, you know, it, show, it shows an interesting yeah. commitment and yeah, <laughs> interesting. Dynamic. So Sunil, it was really fascinating to have you over here and it was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, you shared much. all these perspectives and I learned a lot from you. Uh, thank you for being here and thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you like this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. And uh, please keep watching Nil.talks. Cheers guys.